In today's video, we're going to be creating a form field in Figma that is interactive and that you can actually type into. Spoiler alert, it's actually just a very clever illusion using Figma's prototyping features. In any case, everybody who will be watching you presenting your prototype will probably be very impressed. So let's get into it. For this project, I'm going to use something that I have already created and the tutorial on this is already on my channel. I will be using the component that I created in this tutorial. You can check the link in the description to watch it, or you can click the other link in my description that will take you to my store where you can download this component to save time. Let's just take a look at what we already have. What is the outcome of this video? When I launch the prototype the test frame, I get a form field that I can hover over and you can see there is a hover interaction, right? It takes a while to load but you can hover over this, you can click it, you get a moving label, and then you get a blinking cursor, which really adds to the overall interactivity and makes this more convincing. I can then deactivate that and continue with my design. I can also change the default label to something else, right? And this will be reflected both in this default state and then in the state where it's actually active, right? So this is what we get right now. And I am going to upgrade this component by adding a few little tweaks to actually make it appear like you're typing into this component. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the active state and then I'm going to add another variant, right? So this variant is going to be totally similar except for one little change. And that's gonna be that I'm going to take this label right here. I'm going to copy this, select this variant, and then paste that in, right? So we get a text within the active state. Then I'm going to select the cursor component within, within this form field, and I'm going to move it to the right so that it's behind the first letter, right? And then I'm going to change this. First of all, I'm going to have to detach this component property, so detach property right here with this text selected. And I'm going to change this to, for example, let's say that we're gonna type in the word typing and I'm gonna start with the T. So I have just a T, right? And then I'm gonna position the cursor right behind the T and you can probably guess what's coming next. I'm going to select this state again, add a variant, then I'm going to select this text and insert Y. So we are going to be adding a new variant for each new letter basically that appears in our in our form field in the word or the sentence maybe that we are typing. So this is a bit tedious but it's just six letters if I'm not mistaken so it's gonna be finished in no time. So type then type P, moving the cursor along to the right, and then I'm gonna make some more space for this. So let me select this variant again, new one, select this, add an N, moving the cursor again, right? Get the point. And then finally, we have reached our end of the word. We got the whole word in this form field, we got the typing, and we are almost finished. Now, as you can see, when I go to prototype, uh, with this uh, form field component selected, you can see that there is a lot of interactions. All of these are going to the default state. So what we are going to do actually is uh, we are going to remove all these interactions from all these variants that contain any letter uh, except for the very last one. And the reason is uh, this interaction, which is basically originates from this variant, um, serves the purpose of actually deactivating the form field uh, which means you're gonna go back to the def default state and we want to do that only from the last state, right? Because you don't want to deactivate the form field in the middle of typing a word. So now let's launch the prototype and I'm going to show you what we have so far. So we got the form field with a label. I can click it and I can attempt to start typing, but nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens is because there is a closed circle, closed interactive circle within these three variants. So if I have, uh, if I click on this uh, variant, I, I go to this one, and then when I click it again, I go back to the default state, the first state. There is no specification, there is no process by which you actually get from this state to this state and so on. So the trick, now, now here comes the trick, right? So we have to define an, a trigger for 
this state to change to this one and then from this state to this one and this one and so on. The trigger is going to be drumroll key gamepad, right? So that's probably not surprising. When I'm in this state and when I press T, which I'm going to do right now, T, right? Uh, I go to this one. So that's the interaction we have just set up. So theoretically, if I now, um, if I click this and press T, a T should appear right here. Let's try that. And it did, right? And additionally, you can see that the blinking cursor moved to the right. And because this blinking cursor on its own is actually blinking because there is an after delay interaction, uh, the function is maintained. So let me, uh, let me actually reset the prototype again and continue. And here's the thing, I'm gonna, instead of smart animate, I'm gonna do instant. This is just gonna be instant. And then I'm gonna continue on to the next letter. So, when I, I connect this T state to the TY state, okay, like this, and this is gonna be again, key gamepad, and it's going to be Y. Okay, so when I press Y, I go to this state. Similar logic to when you're actually typing into a, an actual form field, right? So again, key gamepad, P, instant, and I'm going to continue working on this uh, key gamepad, and then another one right here, key gamepad, click to select N, and then this one would be key gamepad G, right? So we should have all these interactions in place, and then, then let's do one more thing to make it really, really interactive and impressive. Why don't we try and add the interaction where you actually press backspace, and then you go back, right you remove a letter so I'm not sure if, if Figma is going to accept our uh, backspace uh, as a key as one of the possible keys but we're gonna try so I'm gonna select this variant the last one connect that to the previous one go to key gamepad click to select and then the moment of truth backspace okay so it works right we can trigger this uh, this interaction, this direction by pressing a backspace. And it's going to be also instant. So all of these, all of these are going to be instant. So again, key gamepad, click to select backspace. I'm going to continue with this one. Key gamepad, click to select backspace, right? Instant everywhere. Key gamepad, backspace. So theoretically, what should happen now is that if we start typing into this form field with the letters T, Y, P, I, and G, we should actually get a word typing appearing. And then when we press backspace, at any point in this interaction, we should be able to remove a letter. So let's try this out. Again, the moment of truth, hover over this form field, click it, and T, Y, P, I, N, G, and then backspace, 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 and backspace. So this looks as an actual form field. And you can see these letters appearing here in uh, the, the bottom left corner. Uh, so that's T, Y, P, I, N, G, right? And G. So the only drawback of this is that if you wanna make it possible to insert a different word, you have to create a whole new interaction, but that's just the limitations of Figma, right? But if you really need to make it appear as if the form field is actually interactive, this is the way to go, typing. And then when I'm done with, uh, with typing, I have two options, right? I can remove it and then type it back in, or I can click it again and it deactivates. That's how this prototype actually works. As I said, if you want to download the initial, the thing that we started with, uh, check the link in the description to either watch the tutorial or download it from my store if you wanna save time. So yeah, using simple tricks, simple prototyping features in Figma, we made an illusion of actually being able to type into your form field prototypes. Thanks for tuning in, leave a like if this video helped you, and I will see you in the next one.